Hi, everyone. It's Andrew Johns here. It is March the 10th, Tuesday morning, with a market update for you. For those investors, part of me, whoever are, whether you're a retail investor or you're an institutional investor, if you didn't have a plan, like my message before to those equity investors, you got to get a plan in place today. This the latest events that have happened over the last coming weeks with the decline in interest rates, the dropping in the yield curve, to me speaks directly to the value of having an investment strategy and not just trying to capture whatever the highest rate is in the market. We are in a rate declining environment and under that environment I often speak to the, 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 the uh, rationale or the strategy of a, uh, a yield preservation versus yield maximization. So let me start by showing you a little bit of history here. This is the U.S. I'm going to talk about the U.S. market, and then I'm going to um, parlay that into the Canadian market. This is the U.S. Fed funds overnight rate. You can see going back to 2007, the overnight rate used to be just above 5%, back when we so-called had a normal market, although it's been almost it's been over 20 years, so I don't know if uh, or, uh, that we're back in where this will ever be a normal market again. Um, I said 20 years, sorry, about 13 years. We saw the financial crisis occur during this period here, and we dropped all the way down to basically a 0% funds, Fed funds rate. We never got into negative interest rates in North America. All the Europeans did, and they continue to retain these negative interest rates, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then starting in 2016, the Federal Reserve started finally raising interest rates in this rising uh, rate environment when the economy continued to boom, people were fully employed, and inflation seemed to be relatively in check. And then we can see here this decline in interest rates starting to happen in the latter part of 2019 and going into 2020 when there was an emergency uh, half point rate cut by the Federal Reserve just last week. Where is that going to go from here? This is the current probability rates. And what we're looking at is the next Fed funds meeting is going to be taking place on March the 18th in exactly eight days from now. The market is currently pricing in a uh, 75 basis point cut. We are heading to zero interest rates, and we are very likely heading into negative interest rates in the U.S. market. One of the things that we've been noticing on a product side is the high rates of returns relative to where the rest of the market is today, um, high rates of returns on what you can get for your 90-day money, and the lower rates you get on one year. And what I'm reminding my clients of is the reason the banks right now are providing these sort of what I call teaser rates on 30, 60, 90-day money and overnight rates is because they actually, as an investor, they don't want you depositing money with them or buying their in securities that are going to go out for six months, nine months, or a year, because in the end, it's probably going to cost them more. And this is the same on the both Canadian and the U.S. side of the equation. So we are anticipating, at this point, another 75 basis point rate cut in eight days from now, and the market is pricing in by uh, June, perhaps, <clears throat> pardon me, perhaps another rate cut of another quarter percent. So in my view, we are definitely heading to a zero rate environment and very likely a negative interest rate environment, and that's reflected in the yield curve. So what you're looking at here is blue is where we were uh, in March of 20, uh, excuse me, these dates are incorrect. Uh, this is going to be, I believe, March of last year is blue. Um, the red one here is just from three weeks ago, and then gray is where we are today. So you can see this massive drop because of the rate cut by the Federal Reserve. And look at how flat this yield curve is. You gotta keep in mind, this is zero and this is 1%. It looks like there's a lot of movement, but the diff there's only 1% difference between here. This is about as flat as the yield curve has ever I've ever seen. You've got rates right now paying on a one month overnight with the Federal Reserve of just over half a percent and the 30-year actually dipped down yesterday below 1%. So we are past the point of investors believing that for the next 30 years there won't be an inflation. I think most investors believe that there will be, continue to be 2 to 2.5% average inflation over the next 30 years. So you'd ask yourself, well, why are bond yields in the states yielding below that inflation level? And it's because of the fear that things could get much, much worse. This is a very good gauge. The bond market is often a very good gauge of how much fear there is in the market. Where do we go from here? Here's a five-year yield curve. You can see also very, very flat. The gray is where we're at today. The bottom line is if you're an investor with U.S. dollar funds, if you're an investor with Canadian funds, 
you want to focus right now on capturing a decent yield for as long as you possibly can can stomach. So we recognize that liquidity constraints are very important for liquidity and for short-term cash investors. But the further out you can push your investments, probably in the end, looking back, you'll be better served. So don't worry about necessarily capturing the very best rate, but focus on trying to get a decent rate for a longer term. Let me give you some very specific examples. If I was using my own money and I had a choice between a U.S. rate that was paying me for simple math 1%, for the next 90 days or 0.8% for the next year, I would take the 0.8% for the next year. The simple reason is because we're expecting a three quarter point rate cut in eight days. And so that 90 day rate at 1% only is attractive for the next 90 days. And when it goes up, comes up for renewal, you might be looking at new rates that are near zero. And don't kid yourself, we could get into a negative rate environment. It's been happening in Europe for almost a decade now. So it's very plausible that within a year's time, when you're rolling your US funds, you might be rolling them at a negative rate. What does that mean? That means that you're going to be paying the Federal Reserve if you keep your money in T-bills or the banks, you'll be paying them for them to keep your money. Let's jump to the Canadian market. The Canadian picture doesn't look too different from the US one and we anticipate very similar results. You can see here that the Canadian uh, Central Bank had actually raised interest rates shortly after the financial crisis lowered them during the 2015 period and then back again started a rate rising environment in 2000 and uh, started in mid-2017. And then of course there's been a half point rate cut by the Bank of Canada in their meeting they just had last week. Currently the market is anticipating a near two uh, basis, uh, two tranche uh, cut or a half percent cut in the next meeting on April the 15th. Almost for certain at least a quarter point cut and when we get into July, the market is anticipating at least another three quarters of a percent coming off the overnight rate with the Bank of Canada. So if you're a borrower, if you're a mortgage holder and you've got renewals coming, what a great opportunity for you. If I was renewing my mortgage, again, you've got to consult with your mortgage advisor and your tax team. But I would say right now, variable rate mortgages are the way to go as rates continue to, to, to drop. Here's your yield curve on the Canadian side. We can see here blue is where we were a year ago, red is where we were only three weeks ago, and gray is where we are today. Again, very similar yield curve. Take a look at the difference between the two. You've got a rate range of zero to 1%, and the, basically the line is flat from one year all the way out to, excuse me, all the way out to 30 years. And then if you look at the Canadian one, same story. Zero to 1% is this bandwidth here, and basically from three months all the way out to 30 years, it's below 1%. Here's your five-year yield curve. So for those investors who are investing, our institutional clients who are investing in more short-term cash investments, you can get the picture here, the rates are declining. This is why when you look at a three-month Bank of Canada T-bill rate at 64 basis points versus a one-year at 54, we have an inverted yield curve, implies there's a recession company coming and rates are going down. This is why I continue to pound the table on a laddered portfolio, longer term uh, uh, investment strategy, push out. We have a clients who thankfully many years ago started rolling out their portfolios as far as a, even as far as a two year laddered strategy. And those clients are very happy with those results today. That's it for our suggestions for our recommendations for today. We'll continue to give you an update. If you do want more insight, give our team a call. We're happy to speak to you and give you some suggestions, whether you're an equity investor in the private wealth space or you're an institutional manager, uh, investment manager in the cash management space. Thanks for listening.